This is an open meeting of the Broadcasting Board of Governors. This meeting is being held in compliance with the government in the Sunshine Act. The live webcast will also be available for later viewing on the BBG website, www.bbg.gov. Today's meeting is being held at Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, headquarters in Prague, Czech Republic. Uh, unfortunately, Chairman Schell cannot be with us today, and he's asked me to serve as presiding governor to conduct today's meeting. I am joined here in Prague by Governors Ed Armstrong, Ryan Crocker, and Ken Weinstein. Um, joining today's meeting by phone are Governors Leon Aaron, Karen Kornblum, and Undersecretary Richard Stengel. Over the last few days, my fellow governors and I had, had the opportunity to meet with many uh, RFE, RFL's dedicated staff here in Prague uh, to tour the facilities and to learn more about their important work. Speaking, speaking on behalf of the board, can somebody, can somebody on the phone mute their, their phone, please? Put your phones on mute. On mute? Um, yes, mute. Um, I'm not sure what, what, how we put it on the mute. Mute, yeah, I, I should. I don't know. I appreciate it, so I think we're yep. good. Yep. So as I was saying, yep. over the last few days, my fellow governors and I have had the opportunity to tour uh, RFE, RFE, RFL's headquarters, meet with so many of the dedicated and extraordinarily impressive and motivated team here about their work um, and their mission. You know, I speak on behalf of the entire board by saying um, uh, we were incredibly impressed with what we've seen. Uh, the work you are doing is absolutely critical uh, to promoting, promoting the democratic values of free and open press and the intelligence and drive with which you do it is also incredibly impressive. Later today, uh, RFE RFL will present an update, present all of us an update on its operations over the last year, including how it's responding to the many, many challenges around the world, as well as its plans to move the organization forward in new and innovative ways, much of what uh, many of which the governors have got, gotten to witness firsthand this week. Our visit to Prague also presents an opportunity to highlight uh, two anniversaries of RFE RL. This year is the 65th anniversary um, since it began its broadcast and the 20th anniversary since it relocated its operations from Munich to Prague. I would like to thank uh, the Czechs people and the government for their extraordinary support of the United States its people, democratic values, and uh, last but certainly not least, uh, RFE, RFL these past 20 years. We would be remiss, though, if we did not speak about a critical issue impacting both the operations of the BBG and all of its um, organizations, and particularly the RFE, RL, um, as well as other journalists around the world uh, and the threats to their 
well-being um, and continued operations. Around the world, authoritarian governments are tightening their grip on the media um, in ever-increasing ways. Our role as U.S. international media is to engage audiences and bring a trusted voice to those who need it most. I want to acknowledge the challenges for all, all of USIM, is that correct? Mm -hmm. USIM moving ahead, increasingly aggressive and repressive governments, rising extremism and the complexities of communicating safely and effectively in the digital age. As we do each time we meet, I would like to take a few minutes to highlight recent and ongoing threats to our journalists around the world. Uh, Shoret uh, Hoshur, I, pronounce, I apologize if I pronounced it wrong. Is it close enough? Yes. Libby, I did okay. Um, of Radio Free Asia's Uyghur service has long been targeted by Chinese authorities for his reporting of unrest and strife in China's northern northwest Uyghur region. In apparent retribution, for his reporting, China has moved to punish his family by jailing three brothers. Two of his brothers are scheduled to be in court this week to face anti-state charges. A third brother was sentenced last June to five years accused of endangering state security. The board joins the U.S. Department of State in urging China to release his family members who have been detained, and to treat them fairly and with dignity. In Azerbaijan, we are all familiar with RFE, RL contributor uh, Adija Ismailova, as she remains in prison on fabricated charges while an active smear campaign is going on against her in the Azeri press. RFE, R RL has had uh, had to close its Baku, Baku bureau uh, after Azari authorities raided and sealed their offices last December. The BBG condemns the Azari government, forced closure of RFE RL's bureau, and the continued imprisonment of Khadija. We again call for her immediate release. In Armenia, two RFE RL Armenian service correspondents were beaten by police while reporting on a standoff between protesters and police in the Armenian capital on June 23rd. Other members of the RFE RL crew working on the protest site were roughed up by police, and one of them was briefly detained. At least one RFE RL camera used for providing live streaming of the unfolding drama was broken by the police. However, this did not stop these extraordinarily brave correspondence from sharing the news around the world. That same day, June 23rd, the Armenian service's live feed via YouTube was accessed more than 2.3 million times. In uh, Tajikistan, authorities have blocked access to RFE RL's website since early June, leaving local audiences with little alternative to Russian media. In Turkmenistan, an unprecedented imitation, uh, intimidation campaign, including pressure on family members and public shaming, has finally forced one of RFE RL's remaining correspondents there to quit. And then last Wednesday, a Voice of America correspondent in Burundi had a grenade thrown at her home in the capital a day after she received an anonymous death threat. She has had to flee the country. And in Cuba, independent journalists, many who contribute to the Martis, are being arrested and harassed on an almost weekly basis, including three who ironically were arrested on World Press Freedom Day. Can't make this up. And as always, we want to remember uh, Bashar Fami, the Allura reporter who has not been seen or heard from since she disappeared during a reporting trip in Syria nearly three years ago. And unfortunately, it goes on and on. 
uh, and somewhere around the world it is a all too common event. Now I'd like to turn to the business before the board today. The presence of five or more governors satisfies the board's quorum requirement. The more board may conduct business based on a majority vote, a quorum being present. On June 18, the board received an e by email materials for the consent agenda, allowing sufficient time for all governors to review prior to this meeting. We did not receive comments from any governors. There are five items for board consideration as part of the consent agenda. Um, at this time, I would like to ask if any governors have comments on the consent agenda. Uh, hearing none, do any governors wish to move for adoption of the consent agenda by the board? I so move. Ryan Crocker. We need a second. Yeah, I second. Ten seconds. Um, are there uh, no objections? No. All in favor? Uh, Aye. No objections? Yes. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Governor Armstrong is going to give us a brief report. Last October, the board established a special committee on Voice of America in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. The committee plans to undertake a comprehensive review of VOA as an element of internet, uh, U.S. international media. Governor Armstrong is chairman of that committee, and last week he traveled to Myanmar, Cambodia, and Indonesia to meet with Voice of America and Radio Free Asia contributors, as well as other stakeholders in the region. I would like to invite Governor Armstrong to give us a brief overview of his recent trip. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, be before I get into that report, I just want to comment that uh, uh, I was wandering the halls today. I apologize to the Pangea team for not uh, going into the briefing. I, I, I know it's an awesome product. I kind of missed that I didn't see the updates, but in my tour around the building, I got to see uh, Satari and Armand, who I can't see. I know it's Satari. I can't see. Uh, I, I see you. I don't know where Armand is. Oh, that's why. You're hiding there. So I saw the VOA and uh, RFE Persian service chiefs uh, hanging out, talking, and uh, collaborating. And so I, I find that very, very, uh, very good and uh, um, indicative of the collaboration that's necessary and is ongoing between our networks. So with that, uh, I did get to, out to Myanmar. Uh, I did have an opportunity to, to meet with President Thinsan. I uh, did get out to Cambodia as well as Indonesia. So at the high level, I've got three points I'll share. One, what I found is demand for Voice of America content, U.S. international media content, is extremely high, fascinatingly high. Heard from the military broadcaster in Myanmar, which was established to run basically PSYOP against the, their own people, wants more international news, wants more VOA content. I tried to push RFA, but they were a little hesitant on that. Um, honestly, I did. I suggested it. Um, but the demand for content is high. They are trying to get it. They want more news. Um, and in a place like Myanmar, there was, when I was there last week, only one other foreign broadcaster operating there. As of this week, there is a second, uh, and that would be China. In Cambodia, also, the demand for content is very high. They want news about the region, the world, as well as the United States. They want science technology technology. They want uh, all sorts of stories. Uh, American idioms helps them understand the statements of our senior leadership, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, uh, I also found uh, when I was uh, in these countries, I'm sorry, in Indonesia, the same thing. Demand was high, high, high. They, they can't take enough. They want more. So also what I found was uh, on the ground that VOA and RFA occupy extremely different areas. You know, I've read, as you have, the arguments of overlap, of duplication, but honestly, when I was on, on the ground, in the field with these folks, one, they, the reporters rarely even account, encounter each other, indicating how separate the activities are. Um, two, they're very collaborative. But three, and this goes back to the point of one, I suppose, is that 
just the nature of the storytelling, this nature of, of the stories that they cover are just so radically different that they provide a mosaic to the audience that is, is not conveyed well to, to the outside people that are not the audience. So that was one takeaway. And then the, the third, and, I, and this, is an, this is an honest assessment, is that we must do better prioritizing and allocating our resources. Um, it, it, uh, and this is something I want to follow up with our, our strategy team, but I know that we as an agency are constrained and we follow the dictates of outside this agency, but that um, there are some uh, other issues at play here. Uh, but I'm not sure, as a governor, how much uh, uh, the realities on the ground are being met by our strategic priorities. So I mentioned Cambodia and Burma, where there are only, uh, well, I mentioned Burma, Cambodia, same idea. There's only one other international broadcaster. In Indonesia, on hearing news that uh, 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 the Indonesian service is going, may be discontinued, uh, we learned that CCTV is meeting with our affiliates and offering cash to get onto our air slot. And those affiliates want to keep us, and we don't pay them. They take our content for free. So I'm just wondering, I just, for me, I want to look back at our prioritization. So there's my brief update. Uh, it was tremendously enlightening, <coughs> and it did help give me a, a better sense of the VOA role, the mission, uh, and its position. So thank you. Thank you, Matt. Um, no questions from the uh, governors. I'm hearing none. Thank you very much, Matt. That was terrific and informative. Uh, I'd now like to, um, I would like to give interim uh, CEO and Director Andre Mendez the opportunity to give us a brief report on agency operations since our last meeting. Very good. <clears throat> Thank you, Presiding Governor, governors, esteemed colleagues. Um, I got to tell you, it's always tremendously ex energizing to come into this building uh, and work with the folks at RFURL. Uh, you know, the uh, you know, as I look around the room, you know, I see the uh, you know the faces of men and women that uh, you know, by and large, originated from the target areas uh, you know that that we broadcast to, and that know very well the value of the mission that we do on a daily basis. And to me, that is you know tremendously reassuring. Um, in all of the major political uh, theaters, geopolitical theaters out there, uh, the BBG is working at a tremendous level. Uh, you know, in the Ukraine, the current times continues to be a success and being moved into prime time in a lot of its affiliates. You know, the introduction of, uh, of the, uh, the weekend programs, uh, it is another step in the right direction. Uh, but this is something that we're seeing across the entire world. In Burundi, um, our stringers and our reporters have just uh, conducted tremendous, tremendous reporting. Uh, of the situation on the ground, and our transmitter uh, for you know periods of time last week over the last two weeks was the only signal on the air uh, in the entire capital of Bujumbura. Uh, we brought news to people that were you know desperately wanting to know what was going on in their country. In Nigeria, you know, we just did a tremendous job of looking at the seamless transition of power from Good Luck Jonathan into the next uh, the next uh, government, something that is absolutely unprecedented in that country. Uh, in Turkey. You know, the, the coverage of uh, Erdogan's rebuke by the, the electorate uh, was absolutely out, outstanding, you know, especially because to a large degree it was such a surprise, but we were ready and we responded properly. And with Iran, both Radio Farga and uh, PNN, uh, the, the, the VOA Persian service have done outstanding coverage of the 5 plus 1 talks. And of course, just this week we've introduced the five-minute updates at the top of the hour. That makes us the, uh, the only international broadcaster that has around-the-clock coverage uh, with real news breaking in. So we will see how the talks are resumed, but you can rest assured that these two organizations are covering them in, you know, in an excellent manner. Um, you know, back at the Cohen Building, uh, we continue to reform the agency at a speed unprecedented in the federal government with a multiple simultaneous automation project with increased opportunity for staff training and advancement and a continuous streamlining of processes and workflows as we go about, you know, completely migrating into the digital age. Uh, of course, you know, the budget is always, uh, you know, uh, front and center. And at, at, at present, we are fully emerged in implementing our fiscal year 15 budget. 
uh, and uh, because of the late start uh, with the continued uh, with the uh, with, of the continued resolution, the passing of the budget, and then the passing of our operating plan, uh, we are encountering uh, you know some surplus in certain areas where we couldn't hire for the investment as fast as we would if the, if the year had started properly uh, in October. So we're looking at uh, where those pockets of money are so that we can reallocate them into unfunded strategic uh, you know, investments uh, that will help us to, to further propel us forward. The fiscal year 16 budget uh, has been, of course, submitted uh, from the administration to Congress. Uh, we were pleased to see that, uh, that the congressional budget justification was actually approximately $30 million higher than last year. Uh, and the House uh, just finished its, its markup. Uh, and, uh, you know, and we were pleased to see that the result of the markup actually generated a small increase over that, despite the fact that the situations from a budgetary standpoint across the entire federal government are extremely challenging. And so I think that it is a tremendous testament that the, of the tremendous work that is being done by this organization and the other networks uh, in the BBG universe uh, that, you know, the administration is recognizing it by virtue of its congressional budget justification, and Congress is recognizing it in the midst of these very tough budgetary years. Uh, so we're going to continue to monitor that. Uh, the, uh, the Senate markup is going to be showing up probably in the next couple of weeks. And then, of course, they'll have to go into conference and come up with our final budget. Uh, I know that there are certain measures in the budget that, uh, that people are worried about, and so I would urge you to wait until the final uh, readout uh, comes out, uh, and then, you know, we have to figure out uh, how we're going to move into fiscal year 16. But, uh, but I, I believe that our story is going to be a good one to tell, again, in the middle of what is a very challenging budgetary environment. Um, meanwhile, of course, we are working hard at the creation of the fiscal year 17 budget. It's well underway. And we expect to present our proposal to the board in mid, uh, early to mid-August uh, for then submission to OMB uh, in the week of uh, September 7th, a little later this week, uh, this year, because the, uh, the federal holiday falls on the first Monday when it's normally due. And so we get a little extra week to work extra hard on making sure that our, pro our projects uh, and our descriptions of our investments fall right in place with the priority of the administration and the strategic objectives that we all want to accomplish. Um, it, when you look around this agency, it is obvious that every network is fully engaged, that we are, you know, more, more relevant than ever, and that we are major presences in every single major geopolitical theater uh, and, and at the top of the news. So with that, Mr. Presiding Governor, I conclude my report. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Thank you. Thank you very much, Andre. Are there any questions from any of the governors? Anybody on the phone have a question? No, nope, hearing none. Again, thank you very much for that comprehensive presentation. Um, now we move to our public comment period. Members of the public who register to attend our open meeting have the opportunity to request a chance to speak up for to speak for up to three minutes. I understand we have a member of the public here today who is also registered to speak. Please come up to the table and introduce yourself before you speak. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today. My name is Veronika Valdova. I am from company Aretezo. And I have got a question and or comment uh, about uh, uh, Russian propaganda in Eastern Europe as part of information warfare. Uh, this is something what has been going on since uh, about 2008 uh, from the conflict in Georgia. And uh, this is something what has been an inter integral part of uh, Russian military strategy. Uh, it's uh, something what is not part of uh, broadcasting world or free speech or uh, journalism at all. It's uh, basically a military technique, information warfare. And uh, it's uh, uh, the basic idea, uh, according to uh, Russian military manuals, is uh, to spread confusion, disinformation, uh, to create chaos, uh, prevent people from being able to decide for themselves, uh, to create confusion, and uh, uh, basically to uh, fresh the information environment with uh, so much disinformation and chaos that uh, people are unable to uh, Define objective reality, which is totally essential to any kind of uh, any kind of dialogue. 
And uh, my question is, what uh, does Radio Free Europe have any kind of strategy how to counter this kind of information warfare, which is basically something what uh, you as journalists are not used to deal with? Thank you. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate your comments. Um, we actually have a deep dive coming up um, where Radio Free Europe, uh, Radio Liberty are going to talk more deeply about what they're doing in their strategy. So I think uh, much of your question will be answered then, but thank you. As the board might lose its quorum during the RFE RL presentation, I suggest that we vote to formally adjourn the meeting now. Do any governors wish to move to adjourn the meeting? I move. Uh, Matt Armstrong, we have a second. Second. Ambassador Crocker. Um, all in favor, please say aye. aye. This concludes the formal meeting of the BBG. The board will now take a short recess before RFE RL's presentation. Thank you. Thank you.